Hello there, Adam Bazaljet here, founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Today's subject, why you should not hit down on the ball. Yes, I'm talking about balls on the ground. Now, I know that doesn't sound right. I'll resolve that for you as the, as the video goes along. But I'm telling you, in all my teaching, I've taught golf for 30 years plus full time. This, this notion of what to do in terms of hitting down on the ball shows me that more people have a bad conception of it and your conceptions affect how you swing. So we'll clear it out. We'll look at four variables, two that make you hit down more, two that take some of it out how to get the proper mixture. Very briefly, if you're new to the channel, maybe you've watched our videos before, but if you haven't subscribed, would love it if you did. It helps us build momentum here at the channel. Also hit the little red bell there. You'll be notified every time a new video is coming your way. Okay, so what are we talking about here with this business of not hitting down on the ball? The reality, hey, the pros hit down on a mid to short iron, four, maybe five degrees, that is a fraction. I like to say that a single stroke of a second hand is six degrees, that's not much, it's less than that. So what they're doing, we're going to look at the pros now, what they're doing, they're actually hitting up, but still registering a very, very slight downward hit. Let's have a look at the pros. There's Dustin Johnson. Before I get into this, just momentarily, we have a wonderful free app for you. Go to the App Store and type in Scratch Golf Academy. It gives you all sorts of tools for tempo training, putting tempo training, green reading, warm-up exercises. Things will really benefit you. Fun things you can take out to the range on your phone. So go to the App Store and pick that up. It's free to you. Let's have a look at Dustin Johnson. And let's stop him there. We'll put a line out from the club shaft. So this is number one of two variables that take downward hit out. And that is the handle, the end he's holding, is rising as he hits the golf ball. It's not moving down towards the ground. Watch that again. It's actually rising. There's another variable that takes downward hit out or minimizes it. We'll look at that immediately after this segment outside. Then there's a couple of segments. Let's go to Jessica Corder here. There's a couple of shouldn't say segments, a couple of things you do that add downward hit back in. Number one, shaft lean. Anytime the shaft is leaning that much, it is tending to swing towards the ground. And her club shaft does not get vertical. It's not even quite vertical there until after contact. So that adds downward hit. And number two, the weight shift. The more you shift your weight over towards the target, in other words, you shift your weight past the golf ball, the more that makes you hit down. But the, the way to reconcile this is the golfer themselves, let's do that same little line on Jessica there, is actually swinging up. The handle's rising, but they're still registering on, say, a launch monitor, a very fractional downward hit due to weight shift and shaft lean. Okay. Second of our variables that add shallowness is swing plane. Anytime the club, reasonably speaking, anytime the club's coming flatter, more from the side of my body like it's supposed to this way, the reason they call that shallow is it creates a very level, shallow landing, if you like. You need that. You do not want to get steep. What I see people do, they hear the pros hit way down. They erroneously hear the more I hit down, the higher the ball will go. That's not the case. So their first instinct is I've got to hit down almost always steepens the swing. Steep is out here in front of you. It crashes way too much down. First off, the club's not designed to do that. Secondly, you're either going to crash the club in the ground and hit one fat and heavy, or you're going to have to compensate and bail out of the shot, none of which you want. So shallow plane, big, big key. Let's get started with some drills. Okay, first of our two drills, this one encompasses several things we're trying to get done. Short iron, I've got an eight iron, could be nine or wedge or something like that. Hip high, roughly, with hands going back. Hands on the forward swing, maybe a little bit more tummy high, lower chest, something like that. Here's the checkpoints you're looking for. When you go through, you want to feel several things. You want to feel your tail squeezed up underneath you so that your weight is clearly on that front foot. Second thing, this lead arm wants to feel high and extended. You'll actually feel that shoulder a little bit higher. And correspondingly, or opposite to that, you want to feel the wrist is slightly arched downwards. So it exaggerates the feel we're looking for a little bit, but believe me, if your weight's left and your lead arm is extending like that, you're getting the sort of shaft lean you want, especially if your wrist isn't flipping the club up in the air. You start to get this feeling for some rise through impact along with the other things we're looking for. So let's hit a little shot again, roughly hip high. 
that's the sort of look I'm looking for. Really a feeling of high and extended here. Club feeling down, I can feel that squeeze under there. Don't make the mistake of hitting one and getting so absorbed in the outcome of the shot, which doesn't really matter anyway. You don't check what you're doing. If you get the position wrong and you're a bit folded down, put it back in position like so. Hold it for two or three seconds, try another one, see if you can get back there again, and so on. Let's have a look at a drill from here. Okay, here's our drill for a shallow swing plane, critical for good golf. I've got two balls there on a tee higher than I would tee it on a par three. Nothing like a driver, but higher than that, short iron. I'm going to set up to this ball, and I'm literally going to put the club on the ground. This would be a little too far to the inside for a real swing, but on the ground, foot or so behind the ball. I cannot do it out there. It's got to be more over here because that's nearer to my body. And I'm literally just going to rub along the ground and hit the shot with maybe a third to half a finish. Now, I'll show you how we take that drill to something more normal. The key with drills is to find some distinctions, find something different. Don't always be locked in trying to do something dead neutral or do it right, so to speak. Find distinctions, then you can make those distinctions more narrow as you practice and work on it. So if I know how to do that, hey, guess what? If I have a shot on an upslope and the ball's sitting on the very top of some spongy grass, I would love to mix in a little bit of this shallowness and pick the ball a little too much. In other words, ball sitting down and thick rough, I want a little bit the opposite and hit more down. So you need to keep your feel in the game. Don't always be trying to associate every drill with exactly neutral. Okay, so I've swept the ball off the tee there. The next one, instead of brushing in, little baby swing near the green, so I've got motion this time. Same sort of an idea. Again, for really good short iron play, that would be a little bit too low to high end out, but gain skill with these drills. Have some fun with it. Hope this video is going to help you dial in the proper amount of hitting down on the ball. Well, I appreciate you watching the video. Hope that helps clear up some thoughts in your mind, gives you some things to work on. Very important subject. Best of luck with your golf.